Our next speaker is uh, Abdul Ayare uh, from Mentor Graphics, one of our sponsors today. Um, Abdul is an application engineer for formal verification, clock domain crossing, and no power verification. He received his doctor in formal verification at the University of Freiburg and worked for Micronas GmbH before joining Mentor Graphics. The, um, the title of his talk is Formal is the New Normal. Thanks. Thanks for the invitation. So, um, my name is Abdul Ayer. I'm working since 2008 um, at Mentor. I have been working with uh, design teams across Europe and uh, helping them to adopt form of education. I'm pleased to be uh, with you today and to share some of the trends that I'm seeing in the industry that are leading to increased use of uh, form of education. So, um, across industry, we see design teams uh, feel squeezed to, uh, by time to market and increase of design complexity. They have uh, limited resource and face numerous challenges that uh, slow them down. From the other side, we can also not uh, <coughs> Uh, afford to take uh, any shortcuts, otherwise they run the risk of uh, finding bugs in silicon um, that leave them uh, behind the um, competition. So, uh, in the past, most of customer get um, enabled, um, get, get uh, uh, their verification done using uh, simulation alone. Um, Today, we, we are uh, seeing customers coming back to us and asking for more uh, tools um, to get their job done. They are actually not doing less simulation. Uh, in contrast, simulation is still growing. Uh, what we see is that um, in, in one side, a more verification is pushed down to emulation at, um, at system level and uh, um, upstream to uh, push upstream to uh, form verification at the block level. Uh, so uh, what we are witnessing is that form verification is uh, that uh, the use of form verification and uh, the ABA spending on form is in in the rise across uh, industry. Um, the formal verification target, uh, the formal verification market is about 32% in the last five years. And uh, this year is expected to top the 100 million mark, um, which is actually um, very, good, uh, very good news. Um, the formal verification is actually a very, um, uh, this is a research. Uh, this is known to be a very challenging research area, and the research uh, community is very active on this uh, uh, on this uh, in this topic. Um, this growth means for us uh, actually that for your company, um, large industry, industry leaders are expanding their uh, use of form verification, and other has to uh, follow suit to be competitive. For you and me, or I, um, this is, uh, means there is a lot of increased demand on verification uh, engineers with verification skills and experience. So I want to just here go over uh, three main factors that, I'm, that I see that are um, uh, essential in this growth and explain them a little bit in details. Um, so the first one is actually, actually is about the core technology itself. Uh, this uh, is used in most uh, all commercial tools. Um, over the last 25 years, just as we have seen a lot of advancement in, uh, er in other areas like uh, mobile technology, there is 
that has also continuous research breakthroughs in formal verification. Um, formal verification is research, is an area where, uh, with a very exciting research challenges and the uh, and, 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 uh, uh, research community is actually very active. Um, as a result, we see today, um, uh, as a result of these research advances, we see that commercial tools have a lot uh, of improvement in performance. Um, so if, if we consider, for example, the, at the, the, the earlier 19, uh, the first model checker built based on uh, symbolic model checker based on uh, BDD, that was a very exciting stuff and um, small circuits was uh, completely proven to be correct using this uh, uh, model checker. Um, but uh, the, the evolution was ongoing actually and a lot, got, a lot of good work was done in, um, in different streams, for example in the abstraction uh, where uh, uh, people have tried to, to find ways to make a search space smaller and to accelerate the proof engines. Uh, there is also for the model checking algorithm itself a lot of, a lot of improvement. If we think about the uh, interpolation from uh, Mr. Macmillan or the bound model checking from uh, Ed Clark uh, in, in the 2003 or 2002, these are uh, actually new technology that helps model checker to be more um, performed. Um, so model checker used in the behalf, uh, under the hood, um, such solver and on such solver also there is a lot of good work done in the academic world. If we take for example the chat, um, chat solver, or chat, sorry, the chat solver is a um, poorly academic tool uh, developed at Princeton in US and uh, this tool is actually used in most uh, uh, available commercial tools and this is very making them very uh, successful. Um, what we have seen also in the last three years is a new uh, algorithm based on induction is called AC3, it's based on induction and uh, combined induction and uh, SAT solver and uh, this new algorithm is actually behind the performance that we see today in uh, commercial tools. Um, so, uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, here, small details about IC3 is actually about inductive proofs. As you remember from the school time, induction, if you can go, if you can do proofs by induction, this is actually easy. Uh, if you cannot manage to do this by induction, then you need some auxiliary help, so auxiliary, uh, some kind of, of uh, help function or help uh, facts that, uh, that helps you. That is the, the same principle here. Um, so uh, inductive proofs are proofs that can be proven in the initial state in all the next states. Um, if, there is a, if a property is, is, uh, is provable, then it can be made stronger to be inductive. And uh, the challenge here is how to make this proof stronger, how to make, uh, to, to find uh, some auxiliary property so that the conjunction of these two things make your property stronger. Uh, this is the big challenge, but uh, there is constructive ways how you can do that. And, uh, sorry, the way is actually to use some counterexample, minimize the count, negate them, minimize the counterexample, and so on. And in, in this construction, you can use a uh, very clever such solver. Uh, the main benefit of using induction in model checking is that you are not forced to use model checking because bounded model checking forces you to unroll the transition state. Uh, induction is always talking about two, uh, it's local, it's talking about two time points. Um, this makes actually the proofs um, 
the, the memory consumption very slow, uh, very short uh, or low, and uh, runtime actually also uh, very good. Um, as usual, there is some cases where bound model checking is still superior. So uh, that is uh, always the case. So uh, at Mentor, we are working with uh, different universities. Um, we have in our quest of former research, we have two guys, two researchers that are working with uh, University of Colorado. It's Mr. Bradley, who has uh, invented um, the IC3 uh, algorithm, and uh, Mr. Uh, Sorensen from University Gutenberg. Um, they uh, are a member of two teams, and these two teams together won uh, gold in half of the category and silver in the other half in the last model checking competition um, last year, in October last year. So uh, in quest of formula, we uh, make uh, available all this breakthrough uh, technology and make this available for our customer to be used in their daily, daily business. So this is the, the first factor, this is about the core technology, which is actually still ongoing. Uh, the second one is about ease of use. If you go back to uh, the first days of form verification or usage of form verification and the hardware community, um, that was not actually too much present, ease of use. And uh, today we can speak about uh, form ease of use. So, uh, there is different types of tools that are based on formal verification. The first one is what we call fully automatic formal. This is an uh, application where actually when you run this application, you don't have the feeling that you are running a formal tool. This is, for example, cloud domain crossings, uh, this property generation or uh, uh, reachability of uh, cut, uh, coverage, and so on, or exchecking. So <laughs> the main uh, advantage of this is that the user does not have to uh, have any uh, verification skills. So um, this is actually a um, uh, bash button uh, technology. The next one is, um, is uh, where the user has not provided the assertions, like the first one, but uh, has to provide some kind of input telling the tool what kind of application he wants to run. So the first the first application is the tool knows about the application itself. The second is about is the tool um, actually get help from the from the designer and uh, from the verification engineer uh, specifying what whatever he wants to, to achieve, um, proving that uh, design constraints are consistent or connectivity checking, uh, standard protocol, whatever. So uh, some some help is uh, needed from the user uh, just in terms of providing. Uh, or specify um, the tasks that has, has to be achieved. Um, so, but even here, um, actually, uh, formal uh, skills are not are not needed. Um, if we go higher, so uh, we see uh, more skills are needed, uh, in particular for property checking, where uh, users apply their own assertion to target specific requirements, um, can be requirements for the system level, can be for, for a subsystem level, can be for different uh, structures, uh, implementation structures that, that are using in, 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 in the design, and so on. Uh, and if we go further, we found also uh, architecture verification, like cash currency and system deadlock. Um, for, for this kind of, of application, more skills is needed. And um, uh, it's a, but this is actually used. used it's just, uh, uh, how to say, um, um, is manageable. So I want to, to go over these th three uh, three types of, of examples and show um, how this works in, in, in practice. Uh, I will start with the automatic formal uh, application. So I picked up the X checking. So Actually, X, eliminating X in your designs is, um, is not an option. It's actually a must. Um, 
the problem that we see is that design because of area, because of constraint, uh, of timing constraints, they are leaving some storage elements not resetted, not explicitly resetted. In particular, databases um, which are dangerous. So um, they are not doing explicitly reset for that. And they are assuming that this storage element gets fetched out before getting sampled. Um, the, the, the thing that makes this uh, uh, problem more harder is that, for example, if you consider a simulation, um, sometimes you are dealing with, you, you have the, the situation what, where, where you are dealing with X, but in reality there is no X there. It's only because the simulation is dealing with an X pessimist situation. Um, in a different scenario, you, can, you have this, uh, you see solid value for some signals, but actually uh, uh, the, the, the simulator is optimist and making solid value, known value, rather than to, to, to have X. This X optimism is actually very dangerous. So, using this verification technique, it means you are verifying not what actually is happening in the silicon. And this is a very uh, dangerous situation. <laughs> in Mentor, we have a solution for this, based one solution based um, simulation and one solution based on formal. For formal, we are targeting subsystems, targeting uh, block level. Um, so we check the RTL for sources of X. Then we check the initialization steps for instances of X pessimism on X optimism. Then we generate assertions and check uh, using the formal engine for X propagation. Here again, we need a specific um, accurate semantic to handle this propagation. So the synthesis semantic will not fit here. Um, so uh, MediaTek is a company which is uh, designing um, big uh, socks for um, multimedia. Um, it's actually aware well about extracting and have had a lot of coding style and the, their designs are uh, Ask to follow this coding style strictly coding, to follow strictly this coding styles, and uh, there is a lot of uh, verification uh, tools in use. Nevertheless, there is a uh, bug still uh, found um, using these traditional verification tools. So they used um, X check and found for different blocks about um, ten uh, bugs. The second one, second application, which is fit to formal application, is actually um, SOC connectivity. So as we know, SOCs have a lot of processor, IP designs, a lot of connectivity, a lot of uh, I.O. moxing. So um, actually, they have, you have um, uh, the number of, of, of connectivity um, are in, in order of thousands. So. If you want to address them using simulations, then you have to write uh, functional test cases to address them. This, this is a very uh, uh, big weakness. So the, the, the other thing is that you have to start late because you have to wait that everything is there and the test engine environment is also there uh, and the different components in your sources there are there. So um, in, in this is a actually something that you can do easily in use form. Okay, um, so that, it sounds a little bit strange because we are targeting the SOC, but actually formal verification can target the SOC and for the assertion to be proven, you can um, black box whatever is not used there. So um, the user is asked to provide some input here in, uh, in, in, in uh, Excel format, in Excel sheet format, XML, uh, whatever, and to, to uh, tell the tool what is actually has to be connected and under which connections. So the tool will generate assertion and uh, <coughs> prove the assertion, uh, provide an environment, debug environment for the verification. The verification engineer can fix uh, the RTL or fix uh, the input spec 
and uh, make some iteration. So here, actually, if the um, Excel sheet is complete, you can um, also generate uh, what, some kind of test plan, uh, test plan for uh, your, uh, say for your um, connectivity, and you can uh, get back annotate your test plan by, from, from uh, the formal tool, and um, so that you can at, at, at any time check what are the assertions that get proven, what are that are exercised and uh, the assertion that for which that, the, the, that are not exercised so far because the components are not on the, sh on the ship. So um, that is also something that you can, that you get for free. So uh, Rockwell, uh, one of the large industrial automation uh, company, uh, was using, uh, is uh, uh, creating uh, socks that are processor based with a lot of connectivity. They are asked to, uh, to prove the connectivity due to the safety integrity levels, uh, level requirements there. So uh, the SOX, so some, some up, the SOX uh, are, has a large number of connectivity. And they cannot do this with uh, format, uh, with, uh, with simulation. So they, sorry, they use a formal, quest a formal, for this application and uh, in two different uh, areas, in pin multiplexing and uh, in block interconnectivity and uh, have good, good results. One particular thing um, is to mention here is uh, for the SOC in question here and, 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 and that they have verified, the, the booting is placed in some external row from and uh, they found out that uh, that there is two connectivity parts with this row that prevented the, sh the, the ship actually to boot con uh, as expected. So that was actually uh, a very dangerous um, error that was found using form. Um, one, one other thing is that it, they, they reported um, that they have a 10x ten, ten time saving. Um, the next one is actually the, f the uh, m most known one is the property checking itself. This is for, if we go back in the last, in the first model checker in the hardware, um, this is what we, we were asked to do, write your assertion from the proof and generate the uh, proofs or counterexamples. So you can um, write a search yourself to, uh, to address different uh, requirements uh, proof assurance for safety critical application or you can address uh, coverage holes so you can have a situation where you have a regression running for long time but something is very important is not is not covered so you can write your uh, sequences and target these sequences as cover points or cover directives you in the assertion uh, in the formal tool um, also another uh, topic is Post silicon, you have failure in the uh, in the silicon, so you don't know where this failure is coming from, in which part. So you can use form verification to first to localize and to uh, capture the, f the the error or the f the, the fail behavior of the uh, design. So you can use um, uh, the assertion on different levels at uh, in, in a black box way. Uh, where you are talking about interfaces, or you can also in white box way, uh, where you can talk about your specific implementation, and even on the system level, when you are uh, writing some end-to-end uh, -end requirements. Um, usually, uh, the language in use are the standard ones, PSL, system data assertion, OVN, sometimes uh, vendor-specific libraries. Um, uh, so the usage of standard language makes sense because you want to uh, reuse this assertion in different other tools in, in, in different uh, other uh, techniques. So um, Oracle is actually uh, one company which more or less matched this pyramid that I showed you before and uh, started with um, 
uh, with connectivity, then had some experience with connectivity, extended the ECMU connectivity to uh, uh, property checking, make property checking on different level for some controller. I was able to run a uh, form for back hunting, and even uh, uh, they have expertise um, captured from the verification uh, done by formal to uh, as coding style or coding requirements for for designing for designing. So um, as a result, actually they have found a lot of uh, uh, bugs um, earlier in the design process. Um, so we hear this is, will be a paper in 2000, uh, an edition paper on Divicon 2014 this year. Um, the picture shows that um, actually there is a lot of uh, bugs were found at the beginning of uh, the process with formal. So the, this gave them time to react to these bugs. Nevertheless, with the simulation, we still have found bugs because of the integration of, of the whole system. So another uh, topic that is actually very essential is the integration of tools. So today, um, we, the usage of tools is, not, uh, is actually complementary. So you can use formal to complement results from the emulation and results from, uh, from uh, simulation. Um, so uh, the verification and uh, the monitor enterprise verification platform um, uh, integrated different solutions and make it possible that this solution communicate in a straightforward way. Um, so here is, uh, again, uh, one, one uh, application, the coverage closure. Uh, in this coverage closure, you target the results of the simulation. Uh, you can identify the items that are not covered. You uh, run uh, your uh, formal tool and find out what is actually cannot be reached. You can exclude that from your uh, simulation. You can also find uh, proofs that these things can be reached. You have witnesses for that. From the witnesses, you can create uh, test benches, and so on. You can uh, uh, actually enhance your verification environment. Microsoft has uh, is developing or has developed the text uh, sub in the world. Maybe um, this uh, Xbox One uh, about uh, five billion uh, transistor. I was interested uh, to, to see everything covered and uh, use cover, uh, cover check. And uh, what I can uh, say in, in brief is that they achieved an uh, improvement of 10% using cover check. And they said that they uh, have uh, four month saved, month, nine month saved. This is actually a very um, conservative, conservative estimation because they put 10 minutes to wave or exclude the coverage hole, which is actually not realistic. But uh, nevertheless, this is a still a, a huge number. So uh, this paper will be presented in DAC 2000 uh, this year, the ne next uh, coming DAC. Um, so to conclude, formal adoption is increasing. It will be faster, smarter, stronger, more. We have better, we will have always better algorithms, um, the ease of use will increase, and the integration will, uh, will not stop. So, maybe thank this is the reason why I'm... Okay, thank you very much. This way. Any, <laughs> any questions? Actually, they must have sit near the front, so... <laughs> you keep me fit, you? Hi, Ashish Sarbari, Imagination. Um, you know you had this slide about formals adoption increasing to, what, 32% in 2013, and year by year there's been an increase. Uh, and then you had another slide which said, you know, there are four different models of formal use. Do you have any insights into which category of formal use has seen a seen surge? Um, yeah. I actually, I don't have the details, but I can guess that is the, uh, the automated uh, solution. Not most, yeah, okay. The automated solution versus are uh, giving the, this factor. In particular, uh, the CDC staff they, uh, is giving this factor. So I'm Chris Brown from Broadcom. Um, so you're talking about the X propagation. I think you said that mentors have a simulation tool for X propagation. Yes. And a formal tool for X propagation. Which do I use? 
Sorry? Which should I use? Is there oh, only two sources? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, the, 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 of, of course, the, so the one thing is you have to, um, for form amplification, you can address blocks, subsystems. You can go a little bit higher, but at sometimes you can get stuck because the power engine will not give you decidable results. So what what we can do? So there is some limits. So you cannot address the whole system lab. The simulation is actually for the system lab. So there is a simulation based uh, flow and works for for the simulation for things for blocks for which we don't have any test case or that has any uh, test bench that you can easily run, it's actually recommended to run uh, X-Check for that. So uh, these two tools are complementary to each other. Okay, so if I got a small block, you wouldn't so, have a simulation, you'd say? Yeah, I would say, uh, even, I would say for some subsystems, I would use first of all. Just one final question, which is from online. Uh, it's referring to the case study at Oracle Labs. Uh, the, the, the question was, an impressive number of bugs were found with formal so quick, uh, but how many of those bugs were cosmetic? Were any of them severe bugs? So about which one is the... Oracle Labs. You have to go a long way there, I think. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is just a question about that. Do, do you know how many bugs were severe or how many were... Oh, um, yeah, in, in the paper they are talking about some paper which was been maybe be skipped to silicon. I don't have the number, but that was severe, but some bugs which were severe to find. Okay. So you I don't that. have the numbers here, okay. but one number. Okay. So there's a uh, number of questions, so I think just thank you very much to Abdul of uh, Thank you.